we need to know that freedom can die. Freedom can die through the CVE because the CVE is designed when something like Orlando happens, that when you're talking about a man who said, I'm a member of ISIS and I'm killing because of it, your media and your state leaders can stand there, look you in the face, and say, well, this was a violent extremer, extremist, and we don't know if he was a lone wolf or he was a self-radicalized person. Do you understand all that language is nonsense? That you have to have a professor? Did anybody notice as part of the CVE when the stories first came forward, both in San Bernardino and especially at, at, um, in Orlando, that along with the first responders was a Muslim Brotherhood-associated imam who set the narrative. We need to put the uh, slides up. Um, did, did anybody notice that? So I think it's important to understand that the, the CVE in language like that exists to replace the language of facts and evidence. Who is he? He said he was a, he was a member of uh, ISIS. Why did he say he killed? He said he was killing according to their objectives. But what did they talk about? They talked about his latent homosexuality, this or that. They wanted to talk about some kind of idiopathic behavior. You know, it's not as new as you think it is that this that branding people mentally ill. It's important to understand that this war is fought in terms of narratives. And the narrative is this, that if I can say someone's crazy, there's no reason to do a forensic analysis of why he acted. Because anybody who's crazy, that's just idiopathic. What's the point of figuring out what a crazy guy did? You see, that becomes the off-ramp for having to say, we have to analyze why he killed based on the reasons he stated when he stated fidelity to an Islamic cause that called for the action. Our freedom can die with UN Resolution 1618 and the hate speech narratives. I just think it's so important to say that. Now, you know, it's interesting today, earlier I was talking to Trevor Loudon, and I was talking about the hate speech narrative and how important it is to understand that that is the mechanism by which the hard left and the Islamists um, pull together a common narrative that's going to be used to attack you. We can actually get the data points and the documents to show how they're gonna do that. And I did it in the context of discussing something called the Maoist insurgency model, which we're gonna construct as a good way to understand the Brotherhood. And what Trevor told me is it's really interesting you say that because of course the hate speech narrative came out of the Maoist insurgency model. And I thought, well that's an interesting data point. It's another, it's another example of that. So, I think it's interesting, let's just continue with this Maoist insurgency model. We trained the Maoist insurgency model because we knew that that model, how Mao did his insurgents, insurgencies, we knew that if we knew that, we could crack groups. How is it that at a time when we have an organization, and one of the key words for the Maoist insurgency movement is the counterstate. That's a term of art. And a counterstate is an entity that sets itself up in a country for the purpose of being a counter government, for the purpose of growing, becoming insurgent, and taking over. How is it that at a time when an entity says they're coming to America to perform a grand jihad and eliminating, destroying America and creating a, a civilization alternative, you could literally parse this into a Maoist statement? How is it that at a time when we see the rise of this organization, the very concept of violent, the very concept of, of insurgency? The very concept of the Maoist groups, the very concept of counterintelligence has disappeared. Do you see, the racism, sexism, homophobia discussion is actually based on what? The denial of your identity. If you're, you're a sexist, if you say I'm a man or a woman, you are a, you're a racist if you say you're American or you're, you're, you're uh, Danish or you're German or Austrian. So you have these things going forward, and do we have them? I'd just like to point this out, because I see where, you know, Batting cleanup means you also sometimes have to kind of cut it short. We, how much time do we have? Zero. Okay. <laughs> Three minutes? Yeah, I'll take two minutes. two minutes. I'd like to point this out. This is a famous quote I have. It's from Sun Tzu. Tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. And it will be good that we end on these pictures because that's a picture's worth a thousand words and also a couple minutes of talking. So here we have the, a, a general for our special operations group, and he says this last year. We do not understand the movement, and until we do, we are not going to defeat it. We have not defeated the idea. We do not even understand the idea. Do you understand that when the person who deploys your special forces assets in the war on terror is saying that, you can make the argument that he doesn't even know who he's killing. 
But let's take a look at this. Because what I'm arguing here is the enemy plans to win the war through the information battle space by getting themselves into our decision making and media loops and putting bad information in, like the CVE. Okay? And it's designed to create a complete, a complete breakdown of your ability to think rationally. And you have a general who's in charge of something very important saying this. But here you have McCain and, Lin uh, and Lindsey Graham right next to um, Abdul Hakim Bel Hajj giving him an award. Who here does not know who Abdul Hakim Bel Hajj is? <laughs> I, I knew that. Well, Abdul Hakim El Bel Hajj was somebody we caught and renditioned. So we knew he was Al Qaeda. He is currently the head of ISIS in Iraq. Okay, he is what the experts call really bad. And, and, and we knew it. We actually had his DNA. So, so here you have McCain giving an award to Bel Hajj on a trip to Libya. So I want you to think about this. Our leaders on both sides of the aisle, have their understanding, they are in a complete state of strategic incomprehension, having ad adopted a narrative that is designed not to define. And these are the people making decisions on who those vetted moderates are that keep coming in and getting our training and weapons and then go back and join Al-Qaeda. Is it the 50 hundredth time that happens that you should start staying there's a problem there? This is the thing I ask. But the other thing to take a look at here is this. Aren't these the people who are also vetting the refugees coming in? So here we have uh, Congressman McCain who, held, who, who, who heads the um, Homeland Security and he basically tells us the greatest, the greatest uh, weapon we have are moderate Muslims, uh, that's our most effective weapon. But he is the head of CARE in, in Texas, this man. So all I like to do, and I'll, and I'll end it right here, okay? Well, you know when you're the last, you know that's gonna happen. So I, I actually told them I would accordion my, my presentation, especially as things kind of fell out. So here is, we have San Bernardino. How many people recognized that, like Orlando, you had a Muslim Brotherhood Imam go to TV and talk and set the narrative before the FBI came and had, was able to say anything about the case? That was the first instance where we saw the Brotherhood control every element of that investigation. It happened in Orlando. But what I want to point out here is, if you see, that's Loretta Lynch, the secretary, the, the um, the Attorney General, and this is when the day of the killing, she was at that, she was at Muslim Advocates giving a speech where she said that the, the Justice Department would, would go after anti-Muslim speech that edges toward violence. Just like Islamophobia does not mean anything. But I wanted to point something out. There's the Muslim Advocates logo underneath promoting freedom and justice for all. Now here's the thing. The average person, well that's just like with liberty and justice for all, isn't it? But think about this. Here is Loretta Lynch, and Loretta Lynch is on a DS promising to go after Americans, and that is, that, is, that is the slogan for the Muslim Brotherhood, freedom from the laws of man, justice according to Sharia, and that's why it's the name of Muslim Brotherhood parties, Freedom and Justice Party. So with that, what I'd like to point out and, and bring to a conclusion, and, and thank you for having me, is that we need to get ourselves focused on the narrative and that it's a killer narrative, and it is seamlessly fused and integrated between the hard left, who are actually the, the people who created the, the ARC model, and, and the Brotherhood. And we really need to look at them the way we would look at an insurgency abroad. Thank you very much.